Right, so pediatric MS is a relapsing remitting disease in almost every child. So we have yet, I have yet to diagnose primary progressive multiple sclerosis in a child. Uh, and worldwide, primary progressive MS in anyone under 18 is probably something else. So with that in mind, relapsing remitting uh, MS in children is associated with actually a slightly higher relapse rate than what we see in adults. So that is even more compelling in terms of using therapies that work well on relapsing disease. Second, I think that just as a as a day to day experience, it's terrifying for a child to lose vision or to become ataxic or to not be able to walk or to lose bladder function. You can imagine as a 15 year old what that would be like. Uh, so every relapse matters, and uh, as it does in adults. Uh, but uh, to a to a seven year old or a nine year old uh, being out of school, uh, having these things happen to them that they don't understand, you know, clearly we all are very very passionate about preventing relapses. Happily, um, I think uh, although the studies are still evolving in formal trials, the, the sort of clinical experience is that children do very well on, on the current therapies. Relapses suppress well in children, uh, which suggests that the inflammatory part of the disease for them is fairly responsive uh, to treatment in, in many, many, many of our children. So early treatment really helps control the disease at a time when you have that window of opportunity. Um, so we're, um, as a community, very, very strong advocates for prompt action access to appropriate MS care. I would advocate that um, the complexity of treating multiple sclerosis is increasing in all patients. The, the medicines that we're using are becoming increasingly powerful, uh, and with that power comes increasing responsibility to understand the risks. That is magnified considerably in a younger MS patient, and particularly in kids under 12, uh, where there are very major differences, um, potentially in toxicity risks uh, and monitoring, and so I have very uh, much encourage all pediatric MS uh, care providers to either be pediatric MS experts, in other words, if, uh, or at least to consult with a, a pediatric MS center in the management of children with MS. Um, and that's just to really be sure that we think about some of the subtle safety features that not everybody would necessarily know about, um, but you know, really do need to be monitored. So, I mean, I think the best case outcome is the same thing we would wish for any MS patient, which is you get a correct diagnosis, you get it promptly so you know what you're facing, that you and your family are informed about your diagnosis, linked in with appropriate care providers who know what they're doing and provide a multidisciplinary approach. Uh, MS is a complex disease and it has a major impact on your life. So care should have a physician uh, lead that knows the, the disease, nurses and nurse practitioners who are superb um, uh, care providers to the patient and the family, social work support, uh, it's not easy to negotiate appropriate school supports, all sorts of changes perhaps in some kids that they might need educationally, um, just even the financial burden of having a child who has to come to a hospital or to a doctor's appointment is a major change in a family's life. Social work is, is essential. Um, as I said, about a third of our kids have cognitive impairments, so having neuropsychologists that know the disease and, and help us understand not what the child can't do, but more importantly what they can do. Um, what parts of their cognitive profile can we work with best? to maximize their school performance and get them where we all want them to be, which is finishing high school and moving on to the next phase of their life successfully. Um, having any disruption in your life is challenging emotionally, and it is extremely important to recognize depression, anxiety, emotional health um, in our patients uh, to help them with the challenge of having a difference uh, compared to other kids. Uh, teenagers don't particularly enjoy being different, <laughs> and so um, you know, really helping them accept their diagnosis and learn to to move forward with it is is pivotal. Um, and parents, um, you know, we've just done a study where we looked at the health-related quality of life of our patients, and our patients describe themselves as doing great. Um, and if you saw, as I said, my patients, they don't look physically disabled. We advocate really strongly that they do all the sports activities, art, music, uh, you know, social activities that all the other teenagers are, are doing. Um, so my patients with that support are doing terrifically well, actually. But the parents report their own health-related quality of life as being lower. So so you know, I don't think any of us as parents are built to deal with a serious diagnosis in our kids. Uh, and so I think uh, providing
providing emotional support and resources for parents is very important. Even though their child's not physically needing care, the emotional burden of worrying about your child's future and, and their, their ongoing health issues um, and potentially the financial burdens of, of increased health care demands are something that we also address in a family-centered way. So the best possible outcome is that the child goes through an average day and completely forgets that they have MS. Um, and when we can get that, we feel like we've done a great job. Uh, anything less than that, we're not really doing what we really optimally want to do, which is to have them living a life with MS, not living a life dictated by MS.